Can gym work really improve your cycling? Let's face it, most of us don't bother with much training that doesn't involve sitting on a bike, but there's an ever-increasing number of cyclists that have taken to strength training to help improve their performance on the bike, and many of the pros have been doing it for ages. Traditionally, most strength training has been done in the off and early season, but many now incorporate this type of work into their training year round. Basically, it's all about improving your posture and stability on the bike, which helps you apply power through the pedals more efficiently. Now, we wanted to find out more about the actual benefits of gym training, so we caught up with longtime gym goer pro rider Rory Townsend of UCI Continental Team Canyon DHB and his performance coach Paul Roberts to see what all the fuss is about. So Paul, tell us how strength training can improve your cycling. So there's a couple of things that happen with cycling. So the cycling position in itself is a little bit like sitting down. And everyone's heard about how, um, you know, sitting down to new smoking and we shouldn't be sat down too long. So if people kind of have a desk job and they're working all day in their desk job and bits and pieces like that, and then their, their chosen pastime is to cycle, if they're then putting in an hour on the trainer each night, then they're adding kind of extra sitting load on their body all right, that completely closes down the hip and causes a, a, like an imbalance uh, or muscular imbalance about the hip and it will completely change the joint capsule as well at the, at the hip. It's those kind of maladaptations that can lead to injury. So you'll often see an older cyclist who's created almost like this, it's called a kyphotic posture, but it's a heavily flexed upper back which becomes stiff with time. The scapular wing and the shoulders roll in and then they end up kind of looking a little bit kind of poked chin and rounded upper back. Now for me, uh, as, a, as a strength coach and a performance coach, I don't want to be creating athletes who, who have those faulty postures because um, those faulty postures and bad mobility of joints are one of the key kind of factors in, in injury. The, uh, the one of the major, another major benefit of the strength training is that it's going to help with your recoverability. So someone who's got just higher force outputs, higher, higher kind of maxes with their lifts and bits and pieces like that, or, or let's just put it like this, a much better uh, tissue quality and muscular sort of quality, they're going to recover way better than someone who's never done any strength work. So that's the coach, but what about the rider? Rory, why do you hit the gym? I had a body scan to, to look at bone density and things like that and it became apparent that there's, there's, there's a trend in cycling where we, we, we have like low bone density in our backs, uh, in our spine, being like a non-weight bearing activity. It was obvious then that something needed to be done. So I think on the bike, it's just, just general um, all round strength. It's not, it's not like a, I go out and feel like I can press the pedals like 10 times harder, but it feels like comfortable doing it. So I think it's, it's more about when, when, when you're absolutely on the rivet, and you are pushing it and you see some guys that are like flapping about all over the bikes and things like that and then you see some 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 blokes that just they just look strong and and that's that's how i feel that the gym work sort of pays off you just you just feel um yeah just all around strong now let's take a look at some of the strength exercises you can do to help improve your cycling we asked paul to pick out three of his favorite exercises none of these require weights and they can all be done at home simple take it away paul and rory this is exercise one and it's going to, we're going to do something called a waiter's bow. Now the benefit of a waiter's bow is that it teaches you to appropriately hinge at the hip. The hip is supposed to be mobile uh, and unfortunately it becomes really, really immobile over time. So like I said earlier, when we have long sustained periods of uh, sitting, when we spend lots of time on the bike, we actually change the joint capsule and we make it really tight and we sit the femur kind of forwards in the joint a little bit. The waiter's bow is going to help to put the femur back in the joint and create more space in the back of the hip. Not only that, we're also going to start to load the critical muscles of the posterior chain, which don't get much loading in your cycling at all. It's quite quad dominant and quite frontline dominant in your cycling. So we're going to start to kind of load the muscles of the hamstrings, the butt and the lower back. Keeping the pelvis in neutral, I want you to just rotate your chest up a little bit and keep the scapula back and down. So the greater trochanter is gonna be your pivot point. So I want you to go chest up, shoulder blades back and together, unlock your knees and screw down into the floor. Now you're gonna make your movement from here, from the hip, and you're gonna bring your chest forwards, okay? So let's go, push your butt back, chest up, butt back, knees back. That's great. This is a split squat, Ollie. So this is gonna be, um, 
challenging the front side of the hip to create more mobility in the front side of the hip whilst cultivating some single leg strength as well. So developing single leg strength is really, really good because it's gonna help you produce some symmetry. So if you can isolate one side at a time, it's really good for balancing your strength. And you might have kind of on your uh, turbo trainer or on your watt bike or whatever it is the trainer you use or your power meter, you might see that you actually you've got 52% uh, uh, on one side on average and 48 on the other side. So actually, if we can just incorporate a little bit of single side work in a, in a uh, excuse me, triathletes or a cyclist kind of training, then that can be really good for smoothing out any asymmetry. Okay, from here, we're gonna take a, a step forwards with the left foot. So the instep is level with the down, that's perfect. And now you're gonna take a step back with the right foot and you're gonna come up right up onto the ball of the foot. I want you to bend both knees and come down until you almost kiss the floor with your right knee. Let's go. That's brilliant. And uh, anti-rotation, okay, which is the spinal stabilization exercise um, and exactly the sort of stabilization that you need when you're riding a bike. So actually when you're cycling and you're switching your weight between your left and your right support over and over and over and over again, that ability to keep your spine nice and still is like an anti-rotational force. Okay, so we're not just constantly kind of flicking around as you put the weight through the pedal. Okay, so the anti-rotational forces are gonna be created by Rory into the floor, all the way up through his legs, into his hips, from his deep abdominal and then into his obliques. Now that looks much better. So now we're stacked ear, shoulder, hip, knee and ankle in one perfect line down, okay? Now Rory's gonna uh, continue to breathe and on his exhalation, he's gonna contract and turn into the wall, but he's not actually gonna move, he's just gonna have an isometric contraction into the wall. So this is a little bit like a plank, all right? So that static isometric hold like you do in a plank. So gripping down into the floor, unlocking the knees, feeling every muscle through the legs and into the hip, kind of really contracting and building tension, okay? So there you have it, three simple strength exercises you can incorporate into your training to help improve your cycling. They don't require much time and they can all be done in your living room. Thank us later. To finish, in a nutshell, Paul, tell us why every cyclist should consider doing some gym work alongside their riding. In a nutshell, uh, when you're on the bike, there is very, very little athletic development. So by going to the gym or starting a strength training and mobility practice, you're going to increase your kind of your maximal sort of strength levels, enhancing bone density, increasing muscle mass and muscle density, which will also in turn improve your recoverability and help balance all the muscular imbalances that come with prolonged periods of sitting, riding the bike, sitting at your desk, all those sorts of things. You know, please, please don't rush out and just suddenly start to kind of whack a load of strength work in. Structuring your training so that you can incorporate it is a great idea, uh, but the returns on it, they're gonna come slowly. They're gonna happen over a decent period of time when you've had continuity.